So tonight's Tuesday, love, really should have a Tassie theme. So pick me the player through Tassie folklore that you're most drawn to. Matthew Richardson's the best player I've seen from Tasmania, and he's also a very generous, humble sort of person, Richo. But when, when Doc, Daryl Doc Baldock got put into the Australian Football League Hall of Fame in, as a legend in 2006, he was an inaugural member, of course, in 1996, when he was made a Hall of Fame legend, Jared, I went and met him. And other than meeting Lee Matthews for the first time, I thought I was in the presence of a mythical football figure, yep. Doc Baldock. You know, I didn't know anything about Tasmania, but I'd heard of Doc Baldock, and when I went to the hotel room, he, he, he had blue eyes, and he was such a, I'll say it again, he was such a humble person, and he, was, he wasn't very tall. And I'm looking at him going, you played centre-half forward, you played centre-half back. And we went that night, and he's just... As I said, he's a mythical figure yep. and he would be so proud and so rapt of what's being announced tomorrow. Doc Bulldog. Who did you choose? I went Peter Hudson for similar sorts of reasons. So the genius footballer and a lovely man. And I would imagine like a huge number of Hawthorne supporters who've travelled through the years to the games in Launceston, you always bump into Hutto on a plane, at the airport, at the grounds. And then it was really when Dan Eddy wrote that book a couple of years ago, A Football Genius, that you sort of remember the all... You immerse yourself in the full context of it. So five tonnes with Hawthorne in the years that he was there, 150 in 1971. But then you put his whole football, his senior football yep, career, yep, yep. take in Tasmania. So New Norfolk, then Hawthorne, and then Glen Orkey. He played 288 games and he kicked 1,701 <laughs> goals. <laughs> So I thought, so just give me the quick plugger comparison who played 281 games for 1362. Yeah. 1,721 goals. But a beautiful man above all. I was going to add young, that. But a beautiful man whenever yeah. you would come across him. He's always got a smile on his face, Peter Hudson. Yep. So we should with yes. that, sort of, <laughs> that sort of record. But um, he, he, again, another mythical figure, flying into Waverley in a chopper, getting out with a bung knee. I think he kicked yep. eight that day. There's so many terrific stories about Peter Hudson and he's one of the legends of the game with Daryl Baldock. Jack and Nick will be flat. Well, I did say. <laughs> 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 we went to a previous generation. Shall we get yes, into it? Yes, yes. Sorry, Jack. <laughs> Top of the agenda, it does serve as the ultimate tease. The Presidents <laughs> met at high noon to approve Tasmania's entry and then the Commission followed to ratify the issuing of the 19th licence. And then tonight, this from Gil McLaughlin, as good a statement as he's ever put out. See you in Tassie, Tassie tomorrow. tomorrow. It's not an Australian Football League if it leaves off the South Island. And that's what's occurred for too long. So this is an exciting project. The $240 million that we have for this project will see here a stadium that will see housing, that will see private investment as well. The announcement on Saturday, I can't think that anyone wouldn't have just been absolutely buoyed by that. All the building blocks are in place and we're you know, really looking forward. It's exciting. I'm really excited for the state that it is going to happen. The addition of an AFL team in Tasmania will be great for all the young kids there. AFL footy right there on their doorstep. It should lead to, to more participation and enthusiasm around the sport. Geelong are believers in the Tasmanian licence. It's overdue having representation. And if there are challenges, the game's big enough and has the financial wherewithal to make it happen if there's enough will. And, and I think we've got to that point now. I can't imagine that it won't get an 18-0 vote today or tonight. I, I'd, be, I'd be completely shocked if that's not the case. I look forward to the day when they actually run out onto the field and, and play their first game. How's his team is coming tomorrow? What's Danny Cochran doing? He came on this morning. He was so good. He I asked was him, would you have voted yes? <laughs> yes. He's and been he opposed to why. it for 30 years. <laughs> so it's the ultimate case study in the McLaughlin administration. Build consensus, do the deal and win the day. Do the work. Do the work, and which is the deal, but do the hard work and be able to convince them... I've got no doubt. The AFLW is huge and, and this Tasmanian thing is huge for, for Gillen, but 
In the long run, this is huge for Tasmania. You know, in, in 30 years' time, Jared, and when we're old, uh, we'll be looking back and saying, remember, this, remember the day they got put in? And just like... It's a bit different to the Giants and the Suns. A hundred percent it's different. It feels different because we're going into a footy heartland state and there's such warmth there where the other one was the new... The other two were the new frontiers. And you think, oh, what's going on here? We're going into forests that we haven't walked in before. But we're going to Tasmania and there's just such a glow about it. Yep. So a decades-old struggle and then a really cleverly constructed five-year campaign... The task force that ran under Brett Godfrey and produced a, a compelling report and a confronting report that this would be the last time. This would be the last time mm. Tasmania would seriously put itself forward for recognition, for respect, and not to be treated in the condescending manner of the past. And no, that can't be done. And it defaulted. We, we stepped through it all. North, south, economics yeah. won't work. Yeah. Population is not there. Can't afford a stadium. So all, all of that was stepped through. We had a Premier and Peter Gutwin who strong-armed the AFL. Is To get to that table, you have to be able to hold some cards. And he did. He threatened and he cajoled and he demanded and he imposed typical, deadlines. Typical politician. So he, he was so forthright. And then the acumen of Colin Carter at the oh, no end, doubt. a visionary who wrote a report yeah. that people fundamentally misunderstood when he mm. tabled it. But as soon as I read it, he went, that's, yep. that's Tasmania's entry to the AFL. Yeah, he did a terrific job. Colin Carter and, and and so did Gil. Gil had to get on board. If Gil didn't have the the no, want it, for it, this is a single moment of leadership where if he doesn't go for it, yeah, this never done. happens. It, it, it's done. And I, 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 look, I look back to all the discussion over the last two and a half years, and we had we've had Jack and we had Nick. They were always confident, even though all the the, the, the stories were getting written. The presidents don't want it. How are they going to convince Prudham? How are they going to convince Jeff Brown? Jack and Nick say, it's OK, I think it's going to happen, I think it's going to happen. I had my doubts there for a while. But then in the last month, when he sat here, Gil, and said 12 months ago we were 1,000 to 1, now I think we're 7 to 1. He said 6 to 1 and they were actually 6 to 4 at that stage. You just didn't want to overplay his hand. If you could have got on to the 6 to 1, you'd have done all right, I reckon. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's, it's, it's just fantastic, mate. This is the power of football again and... Everyone watching this show at home, they love footy. They love footy. You wouldn't be watching the show otherwise. And, and what football's able to do in, in communities, small towns, suburbs, what it's done for, you know, Adelaide, Port Adelaide, Fremantle Dockers. And now we're going to get a Tasmanian team, Jared, representing a state, a football state. It is, it is just going to be... So special. But there's going to be some more problems as, oh, we, as, we, as we go along. But everyone's pulling in the same direction. And that we can, you can overcome everything if everyone's going in the same yeah, direction. Yeah. So, yeah, that's where we sit. And the consensus was so overwhelming today, they didn't even bother taking a vote. It was unanimous Done. by the time. It was a box-ticking exercise that took 15 minutes. So if you think through all the rancour and all the sabre rattling along the way... And it was a 15 minutes box ticking exercise that didn't even require it. Well, they probably heard you. You lectured all the all the cal <laughs> all the um, ignoramuses <laughs> <laughs> early in the week about be on the right side of history. On the right side of history. You've got to be on the right side of history. So 2028 is the likely landing point, but we'll wait well, to hear that tomorrow. The, the name. So always in that task force report, the name was actually settled on that it was going to be the Tasmanian Devils. I went yep. back and had a, a reread of it today. And the trouble is that the commercial trademark is owned by Warner Brothers. That's crap. I know, I know they do, but that's rubbish. <laughs> well, it's not. It's just no, no, how the law works. No, 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 no it's, it, it can't be. There's got to be goodwill in this world. If we don't... If we run out of goodwill, we're all in trouble, Jared. Who is it? Warner Brothers. Yeah. They only got the name because of Tasmania. The state of Tasmania. If Tasmania wants... Right? To call their football team the Tasmanian Tigers, they do it. And if Warner Brothers says you've got to pay us money, all of Australia boycotts <laughs> all Warner Brothers okay. so movies. Think, That'll be hard for you. I think Elbow's going to have to step in and threaten the existence of Movie World. Is it Warner Brothers yeah. Movie World? Yeah, we'll close it down. <laughs> this can't happen. And it won't happen, Jared. 
<laughs> it won't happen. Because I've still got faith in this world that there's enough goodwill around. I hope the American executives <laughs> are able to get a little... Actually, I hope they don't. And then we can abuse them forever. <laughs> for absolutely ever. Have you got a second name? Have you, off the top well, of your head? Well, we had... There was such a strong push today on radio for the Pirates which I hadn't occurred to me at all, but there were people... Oh, a bit negative. It's, it. it's casting the Tasmanians like convicts and pirates. What about the Islanders? Yeah, the Islanders came through. Yeah, yeah I, that, I didn't mind that. But we're all... We're, we're going to get it, the devils, mate. Yeah. OK. You're, you're you reassuring me? Oh, we will. Well, I defer to your commercial acumen. On I've got case. zero commercial <laughs> acumen, Jared, but I do know there's goodwill in everyone. Do you know, if, if Chris Fagan and Chris Scott had been at this desk together last night... Yep. I would have finished with this. 2028. No, you say one. You say All Fagan. Right. Chris, Fagan. Fagan. I think your mission at the Brisbane Lions will have run its course and yep. you'll have won your premierships. And I think 2028, maybe 2027. 27. You'll go back, live the dream, be the GM of footy for the Tasmanian Devils. And I'd say, well done, Fagan. And I'd look at Chris Scott and say, Chris, your time is coming to an end at Geelong. Get out, do a couple of years in the media, and you be the first coach of the Tasmanian Devils. I think later in life, which Chris would be, the ultimate challenge to go to a new club and be that first person to, to set up, to help set up, not just him. Fagan-Scott partnership, I, I think the AFL would love that. Absolutely love that. I'm not sure they'll get Benny Gale. No, he might be higher duties in at headquarters. You reckon he will be at headquarters? Uh, well, actually, we could put that in the real or overs, shall we? No, well, no, let's do it. All right, we'll pick up our Tasmanian conversation tomorrow. The furnace. The furnace burns hot, Robbo. It burns hot for Boy. two premiership coaches in particular, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. They find themselves at the bottom, near the bottom of the ladder. Mm.